Would you take your Bible and turn today to Galatians chapter 5, and this is Palm Sunday. This is the Sunday when Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem, looking to the cross on Friday, and I hope that you'll take some time this Friday and think about the significance of Friday between the hours of 9 and 3. And Jesus hung on that cross for our sin, and he atoned for our sin. There's nothing more central to our faith than the cross of Jesus. And I want you to see what the Bible says about it here in Galatians chapter 5 as we stand together to honor the Lord and to thank him for his inerrant word. And key in there with me verse, at verse 11 in that fifth chapter, the Apostle Paul is writing under the inspiration of the Spirit of God, and he wrote, And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I want you to look at what he says there about the offense of the cross, because that's what we're thinking about today. The cross of Jesus Christ is offensive. Lord, we pray today that you would speak to our hearts and help us as your children to express our thanksgiving to you for the cross and help us to preach and teach and testify to the power of the cross in our own lives. We ask you, Father, no matter who it may offend, that you give us holy boldness to stand for the cross of Jesus, in whose name we pray. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Specifically, we're looking at what Paul wrote there in verse 11 about the offense of the cross. Because you see, the cross in his day and the cross in our day is offensive to many people. It has always been offensive. Paul is saying that in that particular verse. He's saying, that he still suffers persecution for preaching the cross. And many people in this world today are still offended by the cross. Let me tell you, the world does not like it when you tell them that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. The world is offended by that. The world is offended by the cross. But ladies and gentlemen, let the world be offended. Let God be the truth and every man a liar. The cross is the only way to heaven. Jesus said that, and that offends a lot of people. But to us, to the Christian, to those who believe the cross is not offensive, it's a very beautiful thing. It's the means whereby we may have eternal life. I love the old song that says, the way of the cross leads home. It's sweet to know as I onward go that the way of the cross leads home. In fact, in Galatians six fourteen, the apostle Paul said, but God forbid that I should glory in anything save the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. So today we're thinking about the offense of the cross. And I want you to notice three things. First, the Bible teaches us here, the offense of the cross is real. It is real. You only have to read the Bible or you only have to Look at history for this to become obvious. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, the Bible says, The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. In Galatians 6, 12, the apostle Paul spoke of those who suffered persecution for the cross of Christ. In Philippians 3, 18, the Bible speaks of those who are enemies of the cross. You see, the simple preaching of the cross arouses antagonism and often has resulted in martyrdom for those who believe. According to tradition, all of the disciples that started out in the first chapter of Acts were martyred for preaching with the exception of John who was exiled to the Isle of Patmos where God gave him the revelation. And tradition says that John was boiled in oil, they tried to kill him, but God preserved his life, and once they saw they couldn't kill him, they exiled him to Patmos. 
There was a man named Polycarp who was burned at the stake for his faith. A man named Justin who was beheaded. A man named Sylvanus who was murdered, thrown off of a a high cliff. A man named Sebastian who was pierced and flayed alive with arrows. All of them died for the cross. And today, more people have been martyred for the cross of Jesus in the last year than at any other time in history. People today are dying for the cross because people today are offended by the cross. In the 1800s, there was a man named Charles Spurgeon. He was a well-known preacher. One critic of his said, all your sermons sound alike. And Spurgeon said, they are. Whatever text I choose, I make a beeline to the cross. And that's exactly what he did. On April 23rd in 1888, in the city temple of London, England, Spurgeon was censored by the church for preaching the cross and believing the Bible was the word of God. His wife, Susanna, said that controversy cost him his life. And four years later, he died at the age of 57. He never got over it, but he died preaching the cross of Jesus Christ. There is a man alive today whose name is Arthur Blessed. Blessed was the chaplain of the Sunset Strip out in Hollywood, California. He of all men alive today could tell us how offensive the cross is to the people of the world. He tells about his experiences carrying a cross on his back around the world. He was stoned in Morocco because of the cross. He was imprisoned in Madrid because of the cross. In fact, he was jailed 21 times for carrying the cross around the world and preaching the gospel of Jesus. You see, in this world that we live in today, a man can stand up and preach a social reform or the importance of the good of brotherhood of man or the importance of alleviating humanity's hurt or the need for moral reformation. And that would not be offensive. But you let someone stand and preach the cross of Jesus Christ and it is an offense to this old world. Maybe I can illustrate it best with a story from China's history. At the turn of the century, China experienced a rebellion that was called the Boxer Rebellion. And in that rebellion, there was a furor stirred up against the cross. The boxers would come to the homes of the Chinese Christians, and they would call out the grandfather, and they would take their sword and make a cross in the dirt, and they would tell that grandfather to step on the cross. And he wouldn't do it. Then they'd call out the grandmother and tell her to step on the cross. And she refused. Then they'd call out the father and call out the mother and they refused. Then they'd call out the children and tell the children to step on the cross. And of course, the children would refuse. And then the Chinese boxers would take the sword. And they would kill every member of every family that would not step. On the cross of Jesus. You see the cross is an offense. And we see the offense of the cross is real. But we also see here the offense of the cross is unreasonable. You know why it's an offense? It's an offense because of human pride. Man has a lot of pride. Man likes to say I am the captain of my own soul. But let me tell you this. When you come to the cross you can't say that anymore. When you come to the cross, you have to say, Jesus is the captain of my own soul. And man does not like to do that. A church member picked up a hitchhiker who was and witnessed to him while they were driving along. And he told the hitchhiker the story of the death of Jesus. And the hitchhiker said, wait a minute. I don't want anybody dying for me. I'll pay my own debt. I'll die for myself. His human pride caused him to reject our Savior. And the cross is offensive even in religious circles. Go to some churches and preach on the substitutionary death of Jesus and graphically picture the sufferings of Christ from the Word of God. And many people will drop their heads or they'll get up and walk out 
or they'll blush in shame. I had a man come to me many years ago, and he said to me, there is a group of us that would like to meet with you. I said, sir, what is it you'd like to meet with me about? And here's what he said. I couldn't believe it. He said, we are concerned with the evangelistic nature of your preaching. That's what he said, verbatim. He said, will you meet with us? I said, absolutely not. I said, God called me to preach the cross of Jesus Christ, and I'm going to preach it whether you like it or not, and I won't meet with you to talk about that. But you see, the cross offended him. And by the way, before he turned around with his head tucked between his legs to walk off, I said to him, let me thank you for giving me one of the greatest compliments I've ever received. You see, the cross is offensive to so many people. But if you believe this book, you're going to preach the cross. If you believe this book, you're going to live the cross. If you believe this book, you're going to take up your cross and follow him. But human pride keeps us from the cross. Also, human wisdom keeps us from the cross. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1 23, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews, a stumbling block, and to the Greeks, foolishness. You see, the Greeks prided themselves in human wisdom, in their culture, in their art, in their wisdom. And Paul knew that. And the cross is an offense to human wisdom. And the Greeks were like many people today. They looked at sin as an ignorance to be removed by the culture. And the unconverted person today pokes fun at anybody who believes that a God died on a cross and suffered hell and paid our sin debt. To them, that is something, to them, sin is something not to be removed by Calvary, but to be removed by culture. And so the Greeks said to Paul, was Christ a Jew? Could a Jew teach a Greek anything? Was Christ not an uneducated man? Where did he go to school, they said. Whose feet did he sit under to learn? He is a carpenter's son, they said. We will not listen to him. We need culture and we need wisdom. Let me tell you something. It takes more than intellectualism to save your soul. It takes more than culture to save you, to get you to heaven. It takes more than education to save you have to have the cross of Christ to be saved. Now, I'm not against education, but salvation does not come wrapped up in a sheepskin. You are not delivered from sin by a diploma. The only way that any one of us will ever be saved is by the death of Jesus on the cross. And then there is human righteousness. Human righteousness that makes the cross offensive. Mark 6, 20 says, For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just man, and observed him, and when heard him, did many things, the Bible says. You know what that means? It means when he heard John preach, that he got under conviction, but instead of submitting to Jesus, he tried to go out and do good things. He tried to do good works. Because in his mind, he thought if he would do good things, somehow or another, God would let him into heaven. You can't do enough good things to get into heaven. You can't be good enough to get into heaven. And men have not changed today. People hear the message of the cross and they say, I'll turn over a new leaf. I'll quit doing this. I'll quit doing that. Listen. You can do this, you can do that, you can do the other, but salvation is not spelled D-O. Salvation is spelled D-O-N-E. Salvation does not rest in what we do. It rests in what Jesus has already done. It is the cross of Jesus Christ. One more thing and I'm finished. We see the offense of the cross is foolish to this world. How foolish it is to be offended by the cross. It is absurd to me 
to say that the cross is foolish. When you go back to the very first prophecy in the Bible, Genesis 3, verse 15, in that very first prophecy, the Bible talks about the death of Jesus on the cross. And the Bible tells us in John 3, 14, that the Son of Man must be lifted up. He was going to die on that cross. And what a foolish thing to be offended by something that is full of the wisdom of God and the power of God. I want you to think how God provided for each of us a sinless substitute in allowing Jesus to be born of a virgin, to allow Jesus to experience every temptation that we have faced and yet without sin, to allow Jesus to walk this earth for 33 years without committing a single sin. See how God transferred our sin and our guilt and our shame to Jesus on the cross in order to satisfy God's own justice. And when you get a good grip and you get a grasp on the atoning death of Jesus, you're just going to stand back and marvel at the wisdom of Almighty God. It is foolish to be offended at that which will ultimately triumph because one day Jesus who died on that cross will rule the nations, and the Bible says, with a rod of iron. One day the cross will ultimately triumph and every person will bow and confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now I want you to listen to me and I'm finished. The symbol of the Christian church is not a burning bush. The symbol of a Christian church is not tablets of stone with the commandments written on them. The symbol of the church is not a halo around a submissive head. No, the symbol of the church is the cross of Jesus Christ. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. Amen? Where I first saw the light. And the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And what? Now I am happy all the day. Praise God. Praise God for the cross of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Let's stand. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you have not bowed your heart to the cross of Jesus and invited Him to be your Lord and Savior, in just a moment, as soon as we begin to sing, I'm asking you in both services this morning, here in the worship center and in the Christian Life Center, just as soon as we begin to sing, you step out from where you're standing and you come forward. And by your coming forward, you're saying, Today, I come to the cross of Jesus. Today, I give my life to Jesus. You do that if you've not done that already. Christian, here's an invitation for you on this Palm Sunday. How many of you would like to just bend a knee here at the altar just to say, God, I want to thank you for the cross. I want to glory in the cross. Now, I know everybody can't get down here one time, but you come as far as you can and thank Him for the cross. You can sit in your pew and thank Him for the cross. On this Palm Sunday, we glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you'd like to come, if the Holy Spirit leads you to come and just bend a knee and say, thank you, Lord, for the cross. And there may be those here today and you would like to become part of this church family. And we invite you as others are coming to step out and come and let one of our pastors know of your desire today. You come for salvation, for prayer. You come for membership as we sing. Oh God, have your way in this service at this moment. Have your way in our hearts and souls and we cling to that old rugged cross in the name of Jesus.
And the church said, 